Well, a couple of weeks ago, God kind of led me to decide to uh, do a series going through the book of Matthew. And it just happened to be, and this, I think this is how God works it out, because I, if I tried to plan it to work out like this, there's no way it would ever happen. But we're having a baptism today, and it just happened that the next verses that come up have to be about Jesus being baptized. But what we're going to look at today is why was Jesus baptized? Why did God in flesh have to go through baptism? We're going to be discussing that today. We're also going to be discussing that, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is back during Jesus' time, there wasn't just one kind of baptism. So we're going to go over that too this morning. Our scripture is going to be in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. That's going to be our focus this morning. But I want to tell a little quick story about a woman who took her four-year-old daughter to a baptismal service at her church. Later that night, this little four-year-old daughter gathered up all of her dolls and took them up to the bathtub with her and held her own baptism. She dunked each doll under the water, and she repeated what she thought she had heard. And she says, Now I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and hold your nose. <laughs> but I think it's, you know, but it's important for our young children to see these baptisms too, isn't it? That's why I've asked today after we have our invitation that the, our children's church comes back in here so they can see a baptism. It's important for the young people to see it, for our young kids to see that. But with this little girl, she has observed something that she had never seen before. She's really a little too young maybe to understand exactly what she was seeing, but she simply knew that people got dunked and that the, the preacher recited something when he did it. But we're going to talk today about how important baptism really is. If you join me now in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased when John came to the when John was born he was born for two specific purposes first one was he used to re preach Repentance of sin through baptism. Well, we know now that's not how we're that's not how we repent from our sins now is through baptism. We know we only do it through the blood of Christ. But what he was doing, he was repenting through baptism. You can see that in Luke 3 3, where it says that he preached a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And his second thing that John was sent here for, you can see in Luke 176. It says, go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. He was to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. You would think that would be that John would understand that mission very well. He only had two things he had to do to complete his mission. John was to preach the message condemning sin and calling for people to repent. And when John was doing this, people came in droves to John. John preached some powerful sermons. And he baptized lots of people in the Jordan River. He baptized them for forgiveness of their sins. But then along comes Jesus. Along comes the Lord that John had been preparing for. John had been preaching the condemnation of sin and calling for repentance. 
But now here comes Jesus himself, the Son of God, God in flesh, coming to John the Baptist. The man that he had been preparing the way for. John, when you see this, John is a little bit confused, isn't he? He says, I need to be baptized by you. John tried to let Jesus know, no, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. This was not what John was expecting. In fact, I can just see it now. John, down there in the Jordan River, he'd been baptizing multitudes of people that day for remission of their sins. And he knew this was the Son of God. After all, they were cousins, right? They knew each other. And here comes Jesus, the Son of God, down to him. And as soon as John says, what do you mean baptize you? You should be baptizing me. But we see in verse 15 how Jesus responded. He said, permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. We're going to be getting into why it was so important for Jesus to be baptized. And he also was letting John know that that was the purpose of John. Not only to, to lead the way for the coming of Christ, but to help Christ fulfill his mission by this baptism. John was baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. But that's one thing I hear a lot of. Why would Jesus need to be baptized for that reason? Jesus didn't need to be baptized for sins because he was perfect. Jesus had never sinned. Jesus was God in the flesh. So why would Jesus need to be baptized? When we look at Mark chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then Mark proceeds to tell the story about the baptism. But this baptism was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. In Luke 3.23, it says, Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. So now we know at what point in Jesus' life that he was baptized and began his ministry. At this point in, Jew in Jewish history, there were three different types of baptism. And we're going to talk about those real quick this morning. Three different types. We only know one, right? We're baptized into the body of Christ. But we're going to talk about the three that were going on over 2,000 years ago with the, Jewish, with the Jewish people. Of course, we've already talked about the first one, and that's the baptism of repentance. That's the baptism that John was doing. He's baptizing people for remittance of their sins, for their sins to be forgiven. The second type of baptism that was going on then was the baptism of people wanting to convert to Judaism. These would be the Gentiles that had decided that they wanted to become Jewish, that they wanted to be part of the Jewish religion. And so the Gentiles had to be baptized in the Jewish religion. That's the second type. In fact, the Jews at this time said that when somebody was baptized in the Jewish faith, that they were as a newborn child. That's something we say now, isn't it? When, we, when we're saved, a person is now a newborn child. So the, baptism, the second baptism was for somebody wanting to convert to Judaism. So what other reason could there be for baptism? The only other people that were experienced baptism at this time were priests. The priests were experiencing baptism. The law dictated, the Jewish law dictated that the high priest was to be washed with water. The high priest. In, Levit in Leviticus 8.6, we're told that 
Moses was instructed by God. It says, Moses brought Aaron and his sons forward and washed them with water. Later, during this ceremony, Moses poured the anointing oil on Aaron's head. And this anointing was to consecrate him as the high priest. So what we see here is, even back in Levit Leviticus, we see the th where the third baptism started, and there's the baptism into the priesthood. So the Bible tells us that Jesus' ministry begins at his baptism by John. And what happened after his baptism? Jesus is anointed by God with the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. And then from heaven comes the voice of God saying, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. So this is the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ with his baptism and his anointing. Just like what we saw with Aaron and his sons. They were baptized and anointed by Moses. In fact, in Hebrews 4.14, it tells us that we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, and he is Jesus, the Son of God. So from the day he was baptized there at the Jordan River until his death on the cross, Jesus, who is our high priest, prepared himself to be the ultimate sacrifice. So what difference does that make to us? Why should we care whether or not Jesus was baptized or not? It's just a ritual, right? How many times have we heard people say it was just a ritual? It's just something that we do. Well, it's not just a ritual. It's actually baptism is a sacred ceremony. This is why John the Baptist was sent into this world. To perform the sacred ceremony with the Son of God. Jesus came specifically to John the Baptist. He didn't go to any other priest. He went to John the Baptist. This is something that's extremely important to God. Talking about baptism. That's why Jesus was baptized, and that's why he was anointed. Because not only was he becoming a high priest, but it's also part of fulfilling the law from the Old Testament that he became baptized. Not only that, but what did Jesus say in verse 15 of Matthew 3? He said, let it be so now, not to wait Let's do it some other time. He said, let it be so now, at once, immediately. Let's don't delay this. If, the, if this was just a ritual, then why could it not be delayed? There are a lot of people in the world that look at Christians. And they look at it's funny because of what we do, and that's baptism by water. Total immersion of the, the Christian in water. There's a lot of religions out there that look down, look down on people that have been baptized. There's some religions out there that, okay, they've accepted Christ. But these other religions, where they really get upset is when this person becomes baptized. In India, they really don't do anything to, to, to the believer until that believer becomes baptized. And once he becomes baptized, he is cast out or possibly even killed. You know, the Muslim religion is a lot harsher than that. When somebody accepts Christ and is baptized, they are sentenced to death. I read a thing one time, the the average convert at one time in the Middle East 
once they accepted Christ and was baptized, was two to three days, unless they went ahead and escaped. But if they stayed where they were, their life expectancy was only two to three days. That takes a lot of faith, doesn't it? To follow Christ and be baptized knowing that you just signed your death warrant by doing that. So what we see is even non-Christian cultures understand the importance to Christians of the baptism. In addition, there, is a significant, there are significant things that take place at our baptism. If you look at Jesus, the significance of his, it began his ministry as our high priest. And this is one we need to really think hard about. It began Christ's ministry. Likewise, when we are baptized, it begins our ministry as priests. 1 Peter Chapter 2, verse 9 tells us, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness and into His wonderful light. In Revelation 1, verses 5 and 6, it says, Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to Him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. So not, not only does becoming baptized make us a member of the church, but it also makes us a priest after Christ. Christ is our high priest. But we see there in two different verses that once we become baptized, we also become priests. So just like Christ, when he was baptized, his ministry began. When we are baptized, that's the beginning of our ministry. And once you're baptized and you become a priest, you'll be serving alongside the deacons, the Sunday school teachers the Sunday school director, the pastors. The only difference between anybody in here and a pastor is just the job that God has given us. That's the only difference. It's the job that he, but he has all given us all the task of being his priests. In Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And then we see a Pentecost in, that, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Paul wrote in Galatians 3, 27, All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. We have clothed ourselves with our high priest. And then finally in Romans 6, 3 through 4, it says, All of us who are baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. And were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Jesus was raised from the dead through the glory of his Father, we too may have a new life. So in baptism, we clothe ourselves with Jesus. We clothe ourselves with our high priest. And during this baptism, we are buried into the death of Jesus. And then we are risen to a new life. And that new life is the priesthood of Jesus and the priesthood of, of his Father. When we are baptized in Christ, God gives us his spirit, just like he gave it to Jesus. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people felt compelled to be buried with Christ. And there was a sense of urgency that could not be delayed or postponed. Another story out of Acts chapter 8, beginning with verse 26. We're told, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road. That goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official 
in charge of all treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The Holy Spirit told Paul, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet, and he asked, do you understand what you are reading? The eunuch answered, how can I, unless somebody explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of Scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from this earth. Of course, that's speaking of Christ. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him about the good news of Jesus Christ. And as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and, and Philip baptized him. They didn't wait. The moment that they came across water, the eunuch was baptized. That tells you, you know, Jesus says we need not, not delay this. The 3,000 were baptized immediately. The eunuch, once he understood about the saving grace of Jesus, was baptized that day. Why the sense of urgency? Because after, not, after all, it's just a ritual, right? We need to remember that baptism... Is a sacred ceremony instituted by God himself. And it's something that we should do immediately. Once we accept Christ our Savior, that's, one of the, that's the first thing we should want to have done is for our baptism to happen. When you read the Bible about the baptisms, it was never delayed. It never waited on. It always happened now. No, in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, and you've heard me say this many times, it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It doesn't say tomorrow, next week, or whenever. It says, now is the day. There's a story about a man that went to catch a train. He rushed to the railroad station one morning and almost breathlessly asked the ticket agent, when does the 801 train leave? The man at the railroad said it leaves at 801. The man replied, well, it's 759 by my watch, 757 by the town clock, and 804 by the station clock. Which am I to go by? The station agent said, you can go by any clock you wish, but you cannot go by the 801 train because it's already left. This is something we need to remember. That's why we're told in the Bible, today is the day of salvation. Because there might not be a tomorrow. We could leave here today and the church will be raptured. We don't know when God's going to rapture the church. Jesus himself says, I don't know. Jesus himself says, only my father knows when this is going to happen. It could be on our way home today. It could be a year from now. It could be 100 years from now. We don't know. That's why the Bible says when we decide to make a decision, we need to do it now, not wait for it. Salvation is for today. Just like when Jesus was baptized, he, it had to be done now. Just like the eunuch, he did not set off his baptism. He says, let's do it now. So the question is to today, if you've been putting, the, putting it off, the Bible says 
not to. It says today is the day of your salvation. So if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, today is the day to do it. Please stand with me as we have our invitation. The whole Bible tells us over and over and over again about how it needs to be done now. There's no waiting on it. Not only salvation, but also baptism. But before baptism, you have to accept Christ as your Savior and become saved. So my question to today, if you've never accepted Christ, do it today. Don't set it off again. The Bible tells us that we're promised today, but we're not promised tomorrow. So if you've never accepted Christ your Savior, I ask that you step forward and, and come forward today and we'll help you through the salvation prayer. Or if you're looking for a church home, we also invite you to come, over, come forward. We'd love for you to come, become a part of our body here and go on this journey with us. Or maybe you are saved and you've never been baptized, but you're ready for that step. We also ask that you come forward today. Savior, holy wine, let me feel my loving presence, truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee. Betty's going to come up and lead us in two or three or hopefully it won't take as long to get ready. Uh, Alex, mm. Leslie, go to your room. As soon as they're ready and I'm ready, we'll, we'll have our baptism. So hopefully it won't take as long to get ready. going to start with the chorus. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed by the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joy tears with Jesus as we travel sod for I'm part of the family the family of God um, she said she doesn't have the verses and that's okay it says you will notice we say brother and sister around here it's because we're a family and folks are so near when one has a heartache we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. We're going to go ahead and sing the verse and then we'll sing the chorus again. You will notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family and folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all shed a tear and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear everybody sing but i'm a part of the family of god i've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood joy tears with jesus as we travel this sod for i'm part of the family the family of god verse two says from the door of an orphanage to the house of a king no longer an outcast a new song i sing from rags unto riches from the weak to the strong i'm not worthy to be here but praise god i belong from door 
from the door to the orphanage to the house of the king no longer an outcast a new song i sing from rags unto riches from the weak to the strong i'm not worthy to be here but praise god i belong i'm so glad i'm a part of the family of god i've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood joined us with jesus as we travel this sod for i'm part of the family the family of God. Okay, the next one we're going to sing while we're is a song that's old. It's been in the hymnals for a long, long time, and there's a there's a day a song today that uh, you'll think, oh, they're singing the modern version. We're not. We're singing the old version because I couldn't find the music for the modern version and we didn't have a chance to practice it. So we're singing Oh Happy Day. And I'm going to let her play through so we can uh, hear the, play through the whole song once. It is page 439. Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Sing the verse, first verse with me. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee my savior and my god well may glowing heart rejoice and tell its raptures abroad happy day happy day when jesus washed my sins away he taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoice Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Number two, tits done in thy transitions done. I am my Lord's and he is mine. He drew me and I follow on, rejoicing in the call divine. Happy day. Happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray, to live for Jesus every day. Happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. The water's not so bad after all. All right, Alex, we'll, 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 we'll move along with this. A couple of quick questions for you. First, do you believe with all your heart that Jesus has saved you? Next question, do you commit 
once you're baptized to give yourself completely to the commands of Jesus and God. Okay. Go ahead and hold your nose. So, Alex, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, I baptize you. <laughs> and, and the people said... Okay, Leslie, do you believe with all your heart that you have accepted Christ as your Savior? Okay. Leslie, do you also commit that once you're baptized to dedicate yourself completely to whatever God has in store for you? Okay. Now, I baptize you, Leslie, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There you go. And John, will you close this out, sir? What a way to end a service. How about that? Let's give God a praise one more time. <clears throat> we want to continue to be in prayer for these young people, and, and it's exciting to see this. This is incredible as they, as they move closer to God. And, just grow with him. So let's all stand today and we'll be dismissed. Let me, uh, I got good news for you, men. I've got two volunteers so far. We just need 10 more. 10 more is all we need. I'm going to get with Miss Tommy. I'll, I'll find out what Wednesday they'd like us to cook. Please, please really be, be thinking hard about this, helping out a little bit. Just 10 to go and uh, it'll be a good time. It'll be fun. Uh, dogs, things like that. It'll be a good time. Uh, don't forget about our, our the ministries, um, also the van driver. 10 weeks. Ten weeks is all we're, all we're asking. Ten-week commitment. So uh, be in prayer about that as well. Brother Brett, would you dismiss us?